Meanwhile, China is preparing for the annual gathering of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, together known as Two Sessions. Decisions made there will resonate throughout China and the world. Jim Spellman reports. New legislation and policy changes announced during two sessions will resonate through all levels of government in China, setting the tone for the year ahead. Brian Wong is a professor at the University of Hong Kong. As a key method and means of signaling through to officials across the multiple layers and levels of governance, in part and articulate uh, in, in the present circumstances what the concerted leadership of China wants, and of course also the, the correlated policy implications. The meetings are a chance to ensure leaders at all levels of government are in sync with central government policies. Observers expect a significant focus on economic growth plans. Recently, Chinese President Xi Jinping has emphasized new productive forces leaning into high-tech scientific advancements and innovation. Two Sessions also provides an opportunity for listening to concerns and to new ideas. Two sessions are a means for local and also provincial delegates to highlight, you know, top line and top level concerns that they have, largely revolving around not just the economic, but also questions of national security and overarching political uh, unity as well. The international community will be watching two sessions closely. Last year, the U.S. was singled out for criticism, accused of trying to limit China's development. But after the successful meeting in San Francisco between Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden, the relationship appears to be more stable, and some experts say economic news will take precedent. They already have very good channels of communication that they have cultivated over the past six months. So yes, there is in Washington, they will look for as to how China approaches and plans to approach the United States as a partner and a competitor in the year ahead. Uh, but I think the area there will be greater focus in Washington, exactly what is the priorities of the Chinese government on the economic front in, in, in 2024. As China has become more influential on the world stage, two sessions has become an essential opportunity for world leaders to see the Chinese political system in action and to gain valuable insight into China's position on key issues. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington. Well, here with us to discuss the significance of the two sessions is Nicholas Economides. He's a professor of economics at the Leonard and Stern School of Business at NYU. Welcome back to the show, Professor. Thank you, Gerald. Of course. So the two sessions will be closely watched around the world, as always. Uh, I'm curious, what are you looking out for personally? What areas of economic policy are you eager to learn? Well, I think that there are uh, two issues, two concerns in the Chinese economy. Uh, one is uh, the failure of some con big construction companies. And the second is the uh, ups and downs of the stock market, uh, and in particular issues that have to do with high technology firms. So I expect that both of these would be addressed in their own way in the two sessions uh, meetings. Um, and in particular, I expect that there will be some stimulus, um, which might be of the order of 3 to 4% um, of uh, GDP to uh, take care um, of those issues, um, especially the issue of the construction companies and the failures of those companies. Mm. Uh, the issues of the uh, high-tech sector and the stock market and so on are more specific and maybe uh, they need to be addressed in, the, in detail and not so much uh, at a very high level. Uh, let's talk about the failure of these construction companies, Professor, because, you know, so much discussion really has focused on the housing sector. Um, do you see a return of a boom once the dust all settles? Yeah, that's likely, but the, the real question is, how long will it, will it take for the dust to settle? And uh, how are we going to have a reasonable transition uh, so that people are, again, confident in the construction companies. 
Right. So the continued resilience of China's economy has such massive global implications. And we're seeing, as you mm -hmm. said, you know, the stimulus, all these investments in uh, sectors such as artificial intelligence, uh, the transition to green energy, electric vehicles. Are these the sectors that will spur growth in the near future, do you think? Uh, these are key technology sectors uh, where uh, China has to perform well, to do well in the next 10 years. Uh, uh, the right now, it has to um, show that uh, it can do as well as the United States. And that's not easy because the United States has developed over time a lead in those sectors. Mm. Uh, spending and consumer prices have dipped in recent months. How do you see China addressing these? Well, I wouldn't be worried about um, deflation. Mm. Uh, I think that the government can relatively easily control um, uh, inflation by controlling how much stimulus it's going to uh, offer. Uh, and I expect that something of the order of 3 to 4 percent uh, of GDP is going to do the job. So I wouldn't worry about prices falling. Okay, good news on that side. Now, uh, turning to foreign policy, you know, China has really pushed for economic cooperation. But we just saw from yesterday's G20 uh, finance ministers meetings, the members couldn't even come to a consensus on a joint statement because of divisions on geopolitical conflicts. How do they manage their political differences so they can still work on global economic issues? I think the crucial thing is to be able to have a, a reasonable dialogue uh, between uh, superpowers and minor powers. Uh, it's very important to be able, even in the face of instability and geopolitical conflicts, even in, under those circumstances, to be able to talk and for the economy to work and uh, the international trade to work and so on. So I think that we have seen in recent months significant threats to international trade, which uh, affect uh, adversely every country in the world, including China. So I believe that it's very important to find ways so that security returns to international trade. And what more can they do? Well, I mean, the, for example, right now we have in the Middle East a particular uh, tribe, uh, Houthis, um, sending missiles over uh, any ship that passes, any commercial ship that passes through uh, the straits going towards, uh, towards the Suez Canal. Um, and presently there is some countries that have put together a force trying to uh, stop that. And I would see this, what the Houthis are doing, as a big threat to international trade for all nations. And uh, I would encourage other nations to also uh, find ways to uh, guard the uh, safety of uh, the ships in uh, going to the Suez Canal in international trade.